Hello everybody, it's Larry and welcome to today's video where we talk about uh, the ethnicity estimates. How do they come about and are they accurate? And I bet this is a video that has information that you've not heard before and neither of your friends. And I want to start by saying ethnicity estimates are not an exact science. Uh, you know, we talk about, you know, everything's DNA this, DNA that. And we know the DNA is rooted in science, but ethnicity estimates are not an exact science. And before you start, you know, preparing your comments to roast me, uh, I, I want you to bear uh, something in mind. These aren't my words. This is Ancestry's words. In fact, this is their white paper on ethnicity estimates. And it says ethnicity estimates are not an exact science. And you know, it, what it is, is it is a probability. It's a statistical probability. And that's what we're going to discuss. How did they come about that? How did they define it? So it all began. And here we have a picture of the Vitruvian man. And why that's important is the first DNA collection was through the Human Genome Diversity Project. And the Vitruvian man was their logo for the project. And what this did was it was a data, DNA data collection from indigenous populations from around the world. And part of it was, you know, there was an indigenous tribe here in Papua New Guinea uh, over here. And they have a form of T-cell leukemia that's benign. And researchers hope that by sequencing it, we could find out why it's benign and create a cure. And there were different indigenous populations, some susceptible to asthma or susceptible to obesity, susceptible to cancers, some that seem to be immune to, to obesity regardless of caloric intake, some that seem to be immune to other diseases. And by sequencing that, it was hoped that uh, people could find out why and create cures. So uh, shortly after that was sequenced, a uh, patent was filed for and given uh, for that as were 4,300 other patents along with the human genome sequencing, and the patent race was on. Now, the U.S. Supreme Court later ruled that uh, the mapping of the human genome uh, for patents uh, could not be uh, held, and the 4,300 were uh, abandoned. And that's good news for us because it got to the point where, you know, if they mapped the sequence and it happened to be of your family, then you couldn't have kids without permission. Why that seems odd, uh, we see the same thing. Farmers who grow crops, if they reuse seeds, Monsanto has sued uh, many farmers uh, for growing crops and reusing the seeds because the seeds are licensed. Uh, that's funny. We say that because it's our food. A license is a one-time use uh, seeds. And, you know, for them to grow their own seeds is infringing on their intellectual property and robbing them of, of sales and profits. So in the old days where a farmer would grow his, you know, corn or grow his crops and keep a certain amount of seed crop, uh, more and more as these uh, genetically modified crops are being introduced, uh, this is more about control of the, of the food market than it is about, you know, uh, you know, growing the crops. Now, you know, not getting into all that, but it's important to notice this because the same thing was happening with the human DNA. And as a result of these concerns, the government came up and created uh, HIPAA. And what this meant was our information was be kept uh, private. So like when you go to a doctor's office, you get a flu shot. No one's able to, to know. No one's able to say that you've had a flu shot or your background and your health information. Uh, insurance companies can't use that against you. You know, I'm not foolish enough to think that that's really how it works, but uh, that's the theory behind it. So Ancestry, however, has defined in its latest uh, uh, updates on privacy and terms, it has been, you know, an extra clear that it is not HIPAA compliant with the DNA data, uh, that it's not subject to it. And uh, if you're wondering about that, here is the, the privacy notice, and I've highlighted it. Uh, it says that in the update, in the summary of changes for July 25th of this year, it says additional references to the fact that Ancestry is not a covered entity under HIPAA. In other words, it's not somebody that's required to comply with HIPAA. Now, should they be, since they're collecting DNA and they're using that DNA for, you know, health information research? Um, I think so, but they're, they make clarifications that they're not, and 
uh, with that. Uh, it's not saying that they're not doing it. It says that they're not a required entity to do that. And I think that's a very important distinguishing factor to make. I don't know whether or not they're keeping it to a HIPAA standard or maybe even higher than a HIPAA standard. Uh, I think with today's hacking and stuff, you have to keep stuff to an extremely high standard. But, uh, you know, it, they've made it very clear that they're not a covered entity in that. So that's something to bear in mind as myself and 15 other, 15 million other people like me have done our ancestry DNA test and, you know, 10 or 12 million with 23 and me and the other services uh, that have the similar references that they're not covered under that and also doing health research. So as we go back to the human genome diversity project and there was the, you know, the real concern about keeping that data private. So this was an anonymous collection of data. No, you know, none of the people involved in this names are kept. However, you know, the regions were identified, and that was really important for what we're talking about. And that's the ethnicity estimates. So, Ancestry used the regions from this original Human Genome Diversity Project and was able to start creating regions, as you see here. This is the current region map uh, for Ancestry, and it's evolved over time and gotten you know a little better. But after this one, after the, the Human Genome Diversity Project here, uh, there was the Thousand Genome Project. And the Thousand Genome Project uh, further tested more people and defined and got backgrounds. Now, it was an anonymous collection of data <laughs> with ethnic backgrounds defined. And so they could take this data and lay it over the data that they had before in order to better refine the regions that they had here. So uh, how do they do that? Well, it goes through a couple of processes. And, uh, you know, the first one is what's called a, a PCA analysis. And what that means in short is it takes the, the genome data and it basically plots it in a two-dimensional uh, chart like this. And you can see, this is for the European results, you can see clusters, definite clusters in ethnicity. Okay, with this, you can say, okay, based on the DNA sequencing, uh, I can do a PCA analysis of that information and plot it on this chart and see where it plugs in. So if it plugs in in the blue, plugs in the green, plugs in the purple, pink, you know, the different colors. But you notice that in some places, particularly at the top, top left, you see pink overlaying a purple, overlaying the light green, touching the dark green with that brownish yellow. It's all right there in a really tight cluster. Now, there are, you know, the other points that are specifically unique. You know, there's green to the left, blue to the bottom right, and those are definitely different and unique. But you can see that the clusters uh, you know, do have some points that overlap. And therefore, you can't say with certainty that, hey, you plotted over here at, you know, negative 0.04 and negative, you know, 0.02, and that means you're this ethnicity. Uh, you know, we can get to a degree of probability, uh, but that's all we can get. And again, you know, if you look back at this original map, you know, you can see, you know, these were the areas that were tested. And from that, you know, they started doing the, the charts and the plots in order to uh, get to what we were seeing there. So the next thing they did after you do a PCA analysis, <clears throat> they wanted to further iterate the data. And so, you know, they took, you know, 5% of the data and they compared it to the other 95% and they did that 20 times, 5% each time compared to the others to get rid of the outliers. And then they used a process of mathematics, uh, which is the hidden Markov model. And this is kind of an illustration that Ancestry has for it uh, on the, uh, the pathing of the samplings. And, you know, without getting into the mathematics of it all, I, I can say, you know, it's algebraic. Uh, and what it does is you take an observable state and you try to extrapolate the non-observable states. And so you take the information that you have, and again, the information that you have are starting with, you know, these regions that you, we had here, and then, you know, we added in the further defining of the regions we had here. And so we take that and we overlay, you know, those sequences, and then we match it with these sequences. So in here, notice that the first one, the blue, is about 45% of the pie. And in the second one, 
the pie is about 50%, and the third one is about 67%. So you've got this variation in the blue, and that's one of the ethnicities. And in the second one, notice that the brown, 10%, the, you know, the first one 10%, second one's 10%, third one is not even there. And that's important. Now, if you also notice the green, the green looks to be a consistent 20%. 20%, 20%, 20%. So uh, when it looks at those, it's going to give you a probability you know, that there's that estimate. To give an example, a real-world example of this, uh, my wife and her uh, ethnicity report, the first one that we got when she took the DNA test, and we're going to say the brown was her Native American ancestry you know, at two point whatever percent, less than three. And then when she got the updated ethnicity report, there was no Native American ancestry. Now, that's ironic because Native American ancestry is one of those that they predict with the highest amount, one of the highest amounts of accuracy. I mean, there's some that are a little bit higher, but it's one of the, you know, the top five or six as far as the most accurate. When they predict it for you, you probably have it. Now, with a little more irony, our daughter, she, her updated has it. <laughs> so, uh, my wife has a Choctaw heritage and I have a Cherokee heritage. Uh, both of us at a second great grandparent level. And, uh, that makes ours, you know, uh, theoretically at the one and a half percentile, probably a little lower. Uh, it showed up on my wife's as a little over one to two. Didn't show up on mine. It recombinated and my daughter's, it shows up again. So uh, it is what it is. But that's an example where that ethnicity uh, may be there and then it may go away as they you know, refine the process. And I later expect at some other time as they further define the regions for it probably to come back onto my wife's and probably to show up on mine uh, as they get better with it. But, but there is some problems with that because the markers are certain markers are a little harder to identify than others. And so that tells me that, at least in my wife in my case, the Choctaw was a little more identifiable than my Cherokee. So uh, that being the case, they use the hidden Markov model and they do all these iterations. Here it shows that times a thousand. So they do thousands of iterations and they come up with these ethnicities. And with each one of those, uh, they come up with the percentage of likelihood uh, that they're in any particular region. So remember, we're, you know, we're talking about, you know, the regions here and, you know, what's the likelihood uh, that they show up in, in that particular region. And ancestry refers to that as recall and precision. So we look over here, there's a table uh, of accuracy. It's table 4.1, and I'm going to put a link down in the description. And I strongly recommend that you go to it because I think it's going to give you a brand new awareness of your ethnicity result. So with that, there's this table and recall, recall is, did they get your ethnicity right? So recall means, uh, if I tell you you're Scott Irish, are you really Scott Irish? If I tell you, you know, you're North African, are you North African? Then precision, we talked about precision and accuracy in one of our other videos, but precision is how accurate was that prediction? So if I say that you're 23% Scott Irish, you know, 23% is the number that I shot. And so uh, I'm aiming for the 100% bullseye, how close did I get? And so if I told you it's 23%, then how accurate is that number that I gave you? So that's precision. So we're gonna look at a, a couple of these and take particular note. Right here, Cameroon, Congo, and Southern Bantu peoples. 99% recall. What that means is if they tell you you have Congaroo, uh, uh, Cameroon, Congo, and Southern Bantu, there is a 99% probability that you have that ethnicity. 99%. Uh, there is no such thing as 100% in this. You know That's a uh, statistical impossibility. But 99.9, I mean, it, it's very, very, very unlikely that it's wrong. And the ethnicity number that they gave you for that, so if it says you're 50% uh, Cameroon, Congo, and Southern Bantu, that is 87% accurate. So what that means is if they told you you were 50% Cameroon, Congo, and Southern Bantu, uh, there's a 13% deviation. So uh, that means if it's 50, it could be as low as 43 and a half. It, you know, it could be 56 and a half. Uh, but it's right in there. So if it told you 50, there is a small variance that it could be, but it's 87% accuracy. That's pretty accurate and precision. Now, there's some others that aren't so much. 
And so we're going to get into those. But I'm going to look at you know, my ethnicities, and we're going to scroll on down here. And you've heard me say the Scott Irish. And it says that I'm uh, Scott Irish, and it says I'm 23% Scott Irish. And, uh, and I say that Scott Irish, not Scotland and Ireland, because my history from a genealogical perspective, it was Scott Irish. The Scots going to Ireland, you know, and then to the United States. So it was my history of Scott Irish. Here it says Ireland, Scotland. So it says that it's 91% probable that their Scott Irish, uh, projection of ethnicity for me is correct. So there's 9% chance that it's wrong, but there's 91% chance that it's right. Now, from my uh, genealogical research, uh, I'm quite certain of the accuracy of that. Uh, I've got lots of paper documents proving that. So, I mean, for me, I'm comfortable with bumping that up to 100, but statistically from their results, they get it right 91% of the time. Now, this is what's interesting. They told me that I was 23% uh, Scott Irish, Scotland and Ireland, but that accuracy of that percentage of 23% is only 55% accurate. What that means is, and I'm going to round that to 50 just for some round numbers, which means, you know, there's an 11 and a half point variance out of my 23. So it could be, you know, 34 and a half, 35. It could be down at 11 and a half, it, it, anywhere from 11 to 35%. 55% accuracy. That's a pretty good, big swing uh, into that. So, uh, you know, it's not less accurate than accurate but that's you know the precision uh if i'm aiming for the tin ring in the middle i'm hitting between the middle and the outside of the bullseye <laughs> i'm not hitting the middle of that target uh now for others you know you see right here you see spain spain 30 percent. now let me say this a different way if it's 30 percent accurate that means that it's 70 percent not accurate as far as the projection for Spain as an ethnicity. Now, when it does get Spain correct as ethnicity, it's 65% accurate on the percentage. So if it tells me that I'm 50%, you know, from Spain, uh, then there's a 35% uh, variance in that. So it could be 37 and a half, it could be up to 67%. So, you know, there's those variations and it varies based on where it's from. So I think, you know, a couple of them to look at, and the numbers, like I said, it's all about probability. Japan, and again, uh, it all goes back to this human genome diversity project. Here's Japan up here in the, in the top right-hand corner, okay, up here. So you got Japan, and there's, you know, Bantu people, uh, you know, and, and all that's reflected here. So Japan, 99% accurate. So if it says that your ethnicity is Japanese, that's, a, again, 99.9% .9 chance that that is correct. And the percentage of Japanese that they attribute to you is 92% accurate. That's extremely accurate. Look down below at the Philippines. 96% chance we get it right for the Philippines. And the percentage that they give you for Filipino, 99% accurate. That's incredible. And below that, uh, Melanesia. 98% uh, accuracy, 98% accuracy on the percentages. These are some very highly accurate. So why it says that, you know, they're not uh, scientifically accurate, uh, that, but they are mathematically probability, you know, accurate. We've taken the information that has been collected over the years. They've created the regions through, you know, this project and then, you know, later through the 100 Genomes Project, added in the 15 million records that they have from their own people and the genealogical research they have, created their own data set. And that's why you hear, like, at Roots Tech and other places where they announce, hey, we found, you know, 20 more regions for Ireland. Well, you know, my initial thought was, okay, you found 20 more regions for Ireland. Great. You've already said that I'm 23% Scott Irish, so what does it mean to me? Nothing. Well, it actually does. And what it means is uh, that projection over here where it talks about, you know, the percentage of accuracy and then the ethnicity, you know, the, the precision of that uh, projection of ethnicity, those get better defined. And the, every time they define, definitively define a new region, or subregion, that means that the accuracy of the results are being refined and getting better. Because you know, as you can see on uh, you know some of these others, uh, some of those 
uh, map. So here, let me pull back up the, the map for uh, the ancestry, their regions. You see the ancestry regions and you see, uh, here I have to click on it to make it, so I apologize for the shading. You see some of these have overlaps and some of these are contained almost within others. And wherever there's overlaps, you know, you can't get that per, pure precision. Like we look at that PCA analysis and you saw where some spots, you know, the colors overlaid, Norway, Sweden, and Germanic Europe. You could take one push pin and hit all three and just in one dot, you could hit all three ethnicities. Well, as you see on this map, there are some places in here where all three ethnicities meet. Well, that could be where my push pin should go or it could just be, you know, in one of the others and it'd be a variance of error. Well, as they define those regions, that means that variance of error goes away. And that means that now it becomes not only more accurate as far as the percentage for ethnicity, now it starts to become a little bit more genealogical relevant because if I'm looking at a specific area and I know it's in here, but it says, okay, you've got this uh, Germanic, I don't have anybody in that, you know, as far as I've identified in my tree, well, I might, you know, start looking uh, in some of those resources for these names rather than in the places I have been looking. Now, uh, for mine, I, I do know of the Germanic influence. Uh, one of my great grandparents was, uh, last name was Twenty, T W E N T E, which uh, there's actually a university in Germany, University of Twenty in Germany. And uh, I have no doubt that because that's documented where, where my family came from and that's the family name, uh, you know. Her name was Caroline Twenty Clark, and her uh, mother was Caroline Twenty. So, uh, and I know I'm getting that wrong and not putting a German, you know, accent on that. And I apologize to everybody there, but uh, <laughs> it's T W E N T E, not Y, like a twenty dollar bill. It's T W E N T E, and so uh, that is the family name. Uh, for that portion of the family and it comes from you know Germany so that's documented in my family so as they get these regions and they and they define the subregions it, be, it makes those estimates those percentages and those numbers more and more accurate and uh, it just makes everything better so hopefully that helps explain you know exactly how they came about remember it, you know it started off with the human genome diversity project it went to the thousand genomes project they added in their 15 million uh, of, their, all those, of their own DNA sets and they came up with these regions and they're further defining these regions all the time. And then that table that I showed you, uh, that is the table that shows you how accurate each one of the ethnicities are if they project it for you. Uh, there's some like Spain, if they tell you you have Spain, it's only 30% chance that that's right. Uh, there's other like Japan, if they tell you it's Japan or you know Congo, Cameroon, 99% chance that that's the right ethnicity. And then you also learned about the percentage of that ethnicity and what's the, the variation and how much that could vary. So I don't think that I've seen this particular information in any one given place before. Uh, I've seen videos on the Human Genome Diversity Project, and then I've seen videos on the Thousand Genome Project or you know some on the ethnicity, but I've not seen it all put together and I've never seen anything that, you know, tells here's the table. And, you know, if it says that you're Scott Irish, well, it's 91% chance you are, but it's only 55%, you know, precise as far as the percent you are. Uh, I haven't seen that video anywhere and I don't think there is a video like that. So uh, if you have some people and they're interested in the ethnicity, uh, you might pass this around to them. It makes great water cooler talk, you know, because uh, like I said, it, it's not, uh, it's not a exact science, you know, and again, uh, these aren't my words. <laughs> this is ancestry's words. So please, please, please don't, you know, roast me for that. Uh, it's not an exact science. It is a highly accurate, uh, probability determination. It's not exact, but it doesn't mean that it's inexact either if that makes any sense so like you know japan uh, philippines melanesia uh bantu uh, even native american those are very high probabilities and then you have some others which is the basque region uh you know spain uh, italy some of those are a much lower percentage 
Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, pass it around to your friends. I'm sure there's going to be more than one person interested in uh, if the ethnicity estimate is accurate. I will put a link down to the white paper. I think it's uh, really important. You're going to want to go down into the, into the table and look at whatever ethnicities that you have been given and look and see what's the percentage that that's actually right. You know, uh, you've got that. It would be nice to see that answer. If you're listening, uh, you know, just share that with us. Yeah, give us those two numbers and, you know, put them in parentheses underneath each one or over to the right, like 55 slash 91 for Scott Irish. And then for those that are interested, they can go look up what that means. Or maybe you can click on it like you used to have that little uh, brown eye where you clicked on it and it popped up and it told you cinema organs and segments until you realize that that was important information for us all and you'd like to have that on the main page. Well, this would be something there, you know, put that, uh, maybe put a blue circle over to the right and I click on it and it pops up and says 5591 or whatever. So that I really can kind of see that because that, to me, that's important information uh, to make some determinations for that for my own belief that that's my ethnicity. So many people take this that this is an exact science because, you know, we've learned that DNA, the autosomal DNA, it's accurate in determining, you know, kinships. And we look at the cinemorgans and find out the distance of that kinship. And so when we get the ethnicity estimates, a lot of people are blind trusting it as an exact science. And it is a probability. It, it is statistical. And I think a lot of people would be interested in that. So anyway, that's my two cents on it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you all for listening. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon. Uh, I wanted to do some animation on the Hidden Markov model and some other stuff. And uh, I just didn't have the time and I don't have money to pay for the other people. So consider supporting us on Patreon so we can produce you some, some better quality videos and maybe hire some people to, to do some good animations. And uh, we'll get some of those out to you in the future. Anyway, thank you all. Appreciate you all. Thank you for listening.